perhaps the greatest difference between the Japanese and British music scenes is that over here, musical Spengalis create disposable pop stars for whom the packaging is much more important than the actual music, unlike in Britain. So let's have a look at a few of these so-called Japanese pop idols. <laughs> It may sound peculiar to us, but in Japan, pop idols not only have to appeal to their prime audience of young girls, but also to grown men. Japanese pop idols, if possible, are even more unbearably cute and perky than their Western counterparts. And though they might take their cue from Western stars like Madonna, they aren't programmed to have her impressive shelf life. And they don't just come in ones or even fives. Sometimes they come in battalions. No, this isn't a talent show at some middle school. These are the morning girls. Thirteen of them last time we counted. Starting out in 1998 with a paltry five members, the group soon expanded. But what makes them unique is their Logan's Run inspired retirement system. When a morning girl starts looking like she needs an afternoon nap, she is unceremoniously replaced with a newer, fresher face. Is this the Japanese pop idol of the future? It's a liquor doll, the Japanese Barbie. She never gets old, she doesn't eat, she won't imprudently mate, and she'll certainly never attempt to write her own songs. 48 million liquor dolls have been sold since it all began back in 1967. So the brains behind liquor, Takara Toys, thought, why not make pop idols out of doll idols? They held televised auditions to find the perfect embodiment of liquosity and came up with these three living dolls. And this is their first single. Will 48 million liquor lovers like it? I have absolutely no idea, but I could watch the video all day. Japanese schoolgirls, don't you just love them? Cute and studious, innocent and adorable. Well, in Japan, this adoration has become something of a national obsession. And while we might pretend that we don't find these juvenile images from anime and manga a mite uncomfortable, maybe we should be asking, is Japanese innocence being perverted? Well, according to this man, filmmaker Hideaki Anno, it most certainly is. One of Japan's animation gods, Anno's credits include the smash hits Evangelion and Gunbuster. But after years of entertaining Japanese children with his dark sci-fi anime, Anno turned his attention to the dark side of Japanese childhood in his first live-action feature, Love and Pop. Love and Pop explores the Japanese obsession with schoolgirls and the phenomenon of compensation dating. Schoolgirls dating older men for cash to buy designer goods. Seems like all men think younger girls are better than anything else. I guess it's because of their age. They have this incredible energy which older men are lacking. In fact, there's no energy left in Japan. The film covers 24 hours in the life of Hiromi, an ordinary Japanese schoolgirl who falls in love with a beautiful topaz ring while out shopping. To raise the cash to buy it, she resorts to compensation dating. An ultra low budget art house feature, this disturbing two and a half hour epic was filmed entirely on digital video and it's chock a block with experimental camera angles. I made a film by gathering all sorts of interesting footage. <laughs> I thought an ordinary scene could look different by changing the point of view. If you do it like this, you can see what the actor is looking at. It's not the cameraman, 
But the actor who wears the camera like this, so it's the real action. I can show you another one. It will look like what you can see between your legs. Anno's eccentric visual style adds to the film's profoundly unsettling look at the Japanese schoolgirl fetish. Love and pop explodes the innocent belief that compensation dating involves just sharing an ice cream with a kindly uncle type. In a land where merchandising is king, schoolgirls and their bodily fluids are in hot demand. Underground mania shops sell used schoolgirl uniforms and knickers and, if it takes your fancy, schoolgirl spit and so-called golden liquid. It wasn't until 1999 that authorities realised the extent of the problem and introduced tough new laws against compensation dating. Fines are now imposed on men caught in public dating schoolgirls. Many girls don't see what is wrong with selling their bodies and making some money. They can't see why it is the wrong thing to do. They can't imagine what would happen if they were to do it and then get into trouble. Sure, it's arty and disturbing, but is Love and Pop's portrayal of compensation dating true to life? Japanoama recruited two actual compensation daters and asked them to view the film for us. They never that persisted either. That one looks like a ticket tout. On top of that, it never happens when you're in your school uniform. Also, it never happens during the day. Nowadays, no one pays you for just singing together anymore. For example, if two of us go to a karaoke box and give him a blowjob, we can earn roughly 75 quid each. I think schoolgirls are kind of a brand name, just like a designer label. You see the label. Suppose it doesn't have to be schoolgirls. They don't care who they sleep with, but the younger the girl is, the better. They like us for our sexual inexperience, though that's not exactly true. They think we are innocent. 